Hello guys, we are back to the second video for the alcohol. So we are going to continue our lesson with the chemical properties of alcohol. Below I show you here the mind map for the reactions of alcohol including preparations and chemical reactions. So let's have a look one by one in details. Now as you can see, there are a few ways to prepare alcohols. So the one that we have learned previously in our lessons that Alcohol can be prepared via hydrations of alkin. Alcohol can also be prepared via the hydrolysis of haloalkin. And we can also make use of the Grignard reagent to produce different classes of alcohols. So uh, these are generally the three ways to prepare alcohol. Other alternative way to prepare alcohol includes the reduction of the carbonyl compound or the reductions of the carboxylic acids. So with this, they can be, these are the ways to prepare alcohols. Alcohol generally have a few reactions. A few reactions of alcohols that we take notes in our lesson today. We are going to see on how alcohols uh, react, oxidize, to, uh, react with sodium. We are also going to see the oxidations of the alcohol by using copper at 400 degrees Celsius to form aldehyde. And if you use an oxidizing agent, how will it become to become carboxylic acid? We are also going to have a look at the esterifications of alcohol when you heat it with a carboxylic acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. And last but not least, we are also going to see the uh, dehydrations of alcohol and also halogenations of alcohol. So with that next section, let's have a look at the chemical preparations of alcohol. So here are a few generals, uh, generalized summarized tables for the chemical preparation of alcohol. So as we have mentioned just now, it can be prepared via hydrations of alkin, where you react with steam catalyzed by sulfuric acid, or you react with under reflux of phosphoric acid at 300 degrees Celsius and 170 atmosphere. So the alcohol's form follows the Markovnikov rules. Alcohol can also be prepared via the hydrolysis of the haloalkane, uh, where your reagent is either potassium or sodium hydroxide under reflux. So this is the general equation for the reactions for the hydrolysis of the haloalkane. Also from the haloalkane, you can synthesize alcohol by using Grignard reagents. So if you use different alkaboniums compound, you can eventually synthesize the type of alcohol desired. There is also another way to reduce which is from carbonyl or carboxylic acid by using a strong reducing agent which uh, I shall not express in here too deep for the alcohols. Later when we learn about carbonyl compound and carboxylic acid, we shall have a look one by one for all these chemical properties. So formation of alcohol via dehydration. So the hydrations of the uh, uh, alcohols via hydrations follows Markovnikov rule where hydrogen is generally placed at the C number 1 C that already bearing the larger number of hydrogen atoms. So for example, if but one in were to hydrate it, you form butan 2 O and butan 1 O. Since in here you have more H's, so the H will go to here, while the OH will go to here. So this will become the major product, while this one will become the minor product. So alcohol produced by hydrolysis of haloalkane Depending on the number of halogen substituent, different organic compounds will be involved for the formations. So, if you have a mono substituent of the chlorine in here, so the mono substituent of the chlorine in here will straight away give the product of hydrolysis where you form alcohol. However, if there are two similar chlorine attached to the same carbon, yes, at first it will be hydrolyzed to become hydroxyl. However, this process is further carried out, especially when underheated, where dehydration takes place. So when dehydration takes place, we started to form a carbonyl compound. Finally, if you have a tri-substituted uh, haloalkane at the same carbon, yes, at first they will be hydrolyzed to become three hydroxyl group at the same carbon. Eventually, dehydration will also take place and you are ready to form a carboxylic acid. So these are the few ways of how we prepare alcohols and what will happen if we have a multi-substituent halogens inside the alcohol. 
Next, we are going to have a look at the chemical reactions of alcohol. So the in reaction involving alcohol can be generally involving in two types. It is in between the fission of COH or it includes in, uh, in the fission of COH. So the fission of OH includes formation of alkoxide, ester and oxidation of alcohol whereas the formation of the COH is depending on fission of COH is dehydration of alcohol and the reaction with phosphorus halide. So with that realization, let's have a look at the summarize table prepared for you. So from the summarize table, you can see that uh, when you react with an electropositive metal such as sodium or potassium, you form an alkoxide. So these are the reagent condition and the equation for the reactions. Alcohol can also undergo esterification via a condensation reaction when we act with a glacial carboxylic acid under reflux. So this is a general equation for the reactions. Alcohol can also undergo oxidation depend on the type of oxidizing agents we react with. You can react either with acidified potassium manganate or acidified potassium dichromate. Dehydration of alcohol via elimination reaction is by using heated uh, sulfuric acid, uh, heated concentrated sulfuric acid at 180 degrees Celsius, or there is an alternative way where you use alumina heated strongly at 350 degrees Celsius. And last but not least, the halogenation, the last reaction we're going to see later is halogenation of alcohol. So you use a halogenating agent, you will form back the hydroxyl to become a haloalkane back. So with the session, let's have a look one by one for each of the reactions in here. So the first reaction that we're going to have a look is the reaction of alcohol with electropositive metals. As we described earlier, alcohol is considerably a weak acid. So when it is a weak acid, it reacts vigorously with electropositive metals. According to the general equation, 2ROH plus 2Na with 2RONA plus H2. However, the same reaction can also occur for phenol where it can form sodium phenoxide according to the equation. So you have a benzene with a sodium phenoxide. Okay, when you react with a sodium, okay, so you form a sodium phenoxide. O and A. Okay. So this is the general equation. However, the reaction of alcohol with metal is slow and it takes a longer time for alcohol to react completely with water. So rate of reaction decrease from a primary tertiary to secondary to primary alcohol. So in another word, alcohol reacts the slowest. So metal alkoxide form can be then hydrolyzed back to become alcohol by reacting with water. So you form back alcohol and also sodium hydroxide. So this is the examples of the reaction. This is the exam first reactions of alcohol, which is the reaction of alcohol with electropositive metals. Second reaction of alcohol is esterification of alcohol, where it is actually a type of condensation reactions. So when carboxylic acid react with alcohol, catalyzed by concentrated, uh, catalyzed by concentrated sulfuric acid under reflux, you form ester through condensation reactions. So why is it that we call as a condensation? Note that a wall, small water molecule is given off as a side product when two organic compounds of carboxylic acid and also alcohol were to involve in the chemical reactions to give ester. So when a small molecule is given off as a result for this reaction, such reaction is called as a condensation reactions. So for esterification to achieve high yield, usually a glacial carboxylic acid and high purity of alcohol are used to react. So products from uh, ester is an oily liquid which gives a pleasant sweet smell. Now the formation of ester involves the uh, fission of OH from the carboxylic acid and the fission of H from the alcohol. However, the naming of the ester works in the other way around where alkyl group is named after alcohol while alkanoates come from the carboxylic acids. So here are a few examples of esterification reactions. If you have ethanol, we act with ethanol acid, catalyzed by concentrated sulfuric acid, so you form ethyl ethanoate plus water. Another example is propyl one o react with butanoic acid, catalyzed by concentrated sulfuric acid under reflux, you form propyl butanoate and also water. So this is the second chemical reactions of the alcohol esterification. Now esterification can also be achieved if you use acyl chloride. 
So if you use as simple, right? General equation is written as below. So you still at the end of the day form an ester. However, the side product is HCl. So this HCl is observed as a white film, which is readily to be released. So note that the reaction between acyl chloride and alcohol require a milder condition because the inductive effect caused by the C double bond or making the Cl more readily to leave the group. For details, we will discuss later when we discuss about carboxylic acid derivatives. So these are the second reactions of the alcohol. The third reaction of alcohol is the oxidation of alcohol. So alcohol reacts with a strong oxidizing agent such as acidified potassium manganates under reflux or potassium dichromates under reflux. So general equations according to the classifications are given below. If you have methanol to react, so methanol will first oxidize to become carbon dioxide and water, while other primary alcohol will oxidize to become carboxylic acid. So this is general equation for the reactions I've described just now. As for a secondary alcohol, if you have a secondary alcohol oxidized, you form a ketone. Okay, according to the equations in here. However, a tertiary alcohol cannot be oxidized. So methanol and other primary alcohols such as ethanol, propyl 1 oil can be further oxidized to form carboxylic acid. However, in the case of methanol, it will further oxidize to become carbon dioxide water. So the step-by-step -step reactions are described below where methanol, when it oxidized, it will form methanol. Methanol further oxidized to form methanol acid. And methanol acid further oxidized to become carbon dioxide and water. Now, for this case, there is no way to stop the re uh, reactions to keep on oxidate, uh, oxidized until the final product because it is very hard to control the conditions. As for primary alcohol, so primary alcohol, when oxidized, will form aldehyde and ends up to become a carboxylic acid. Now ignore this one, huh? I accidentally paste it out. As for a secondary alcohol, secondary alcohol, no matter you use KMnO4 or K2Cl207, so at the end of the day, you form a ketone. However, ketone form will not be further oxidized to become carboxylic acid or other thing else. Tertiary alcohol cannot be oxidized to common compound, so not from this reaction has one aspect in common. When oxidation takes place, a hydrogen atom is lost. So tertiary alcohol has no hydrogen carbon, so cannot be oxidized in such way. Other than using acidified potassium, like dichromate and manganate, there are also some other common oxidizing agents, such as chromic acid. So this chromic acid can be reacted by chromium trioxide from sodium dichromate in acidic solutions. So, if you want the alcohol to stop in the way, there is another alternative way to oxidize alcohol. So when primary and secondary alcohol are treated separately with copper metals heated at 400 degrees Celsius or pyridine chlorochromate PCC in an organic solvent, so control oxidation can be achieved, where primary and secondary alcohol can only oxidize to form carbonyl compound. The general equations are expressed below. So for a primary alcohol, when you use a copper or PCC, you form methanol and also aldehyde. So methanol will not further oxidize to become carbon dioxide and water. Aldehyde will not further oxidize to become a carboxylic acid. So these are the general equations for the reactions mentioned. As for secondary alcohol, secondary alcohol, if you use copper at 400 degrees Celsius, you still at the end form ketone and will not form anything else. So these are a few examples of the alcohols and its reactions. Okay, and I believe that is all for the second video of the chemical reactions. We're going to continue with the final video later. Thank you.